Hi everybody, welcome back to our channel. This is Sanaram. Today in this video, we are going to see about the in and out of check bounce. So let us start with few words which we can familiarize ourselves first. First one is written check memo. So when I issue a check, the person receives it and tries depositing it and it gets bounced. So that person will be receiving a written bounce check memo in which the reason for the bounce would be mentioned. The next one, check. As we all know, when we open an account, we get the check book and each page is called the check leaf and has few details which has to be mentioned there. And the person who is issuing the check is called the drawer and the one who is receiving the check is called the drawing. And then we have is bounce check. So when a person tries depositing the check, and it gets bounced back and they say this might be due to any reasons but mostly it is mentioned as insufficient funds then this specific thing is called a check bounce check there are few essential characteristics of a check first one it has to be written second one it has to be in an unconditional order for example for a conditional one i would say a promissory note in which we say so and so thing is done then so much is paid but here when it comes to the check, it's not going to work like that. If it is in an unconditional order, it will be dishonored. So check has to be purely in an unconditional order. And check should be written to a specific person with a specific amount mentioned in that with the signature of the person who is issuing the check. Banker has to be specified and this has to be payable on demand. Check bounce reasons. Insufficient fund is one of the main or the most popular reasons why we know a check might get bounced. So normally when we go and deposit a check and it gets bounced, we think okay fine. So the person who has given this check has insufficient balance in the account. For example, the check has been issued for 25,000 but the person who has the account has only 15 or 20,000 in the account. So this is the normal reason which we commonly think but there are other reasons apart from this as well might be a signature mismatch, might be an account number mismatch and it can also be that the numbers which we have written in the amount section and the words which we have written might not match. For example, the amount which we are paying might be 25,580 but we have mentioned in words as 25,680. So this mistake or this mismatch can also result in a bounce check. So the person has actually issued the check and the account is being closed, then automatically the check will bounce. And if the person after issuing the check passes away, of course the check will be bounced. If it is a joint account, both the signatures are required. It might be two sisters or two brothers, siblings, parents or whoever it might be. If it is a joint account, then both the signatures are mandatory. If only one has signed, then the check will get bounced. And this recently happened in one of my friend's life. So she received a check. It was a final settlement from one company. So they have given her a specific amount. And she didn't realize that there was an expiry date. She forgot about it completely. After four to five months, she took the check. She went, deposited it in a bank. And then it bounced. What was the reason there? Because the expiry date was not noticed. Normally, we have an expiry date of three months. It is given on... 20th of Jan, Feb, March, April, we have to do it. If we don't go and clear it, then it will get bounced. So always remember, if you get a check, try to do it ASAP so that you don't result in a check bounce. Next one is, I have issued a check, but then I realize due to some reasons that this person is not to be paid the same. And if the person has taken the check and traveled somewhere, what can I do? I can stop it by telling the bank that so-and-so person is going to come and deposit this check we have check leaf numbers as well and this cannot be authorized like it has to be cancelled. And then when you go and submit the check, it will get bounced because though it was not directly informed to you, it was informed to the bank. If the account holder himself or herself stops the payment, then the check will be bounced. And in case there is any overwriting in the check, might be in account number or in the amount or whatever it might be in the check, if there is an overwriting, it can be bounced. And if the genuineness of the check or the person who has issued the check is being doubted or if the bank has a second thought, then there are possibilities of a check to be get bounced. One more thing which I would add is if overdraft limit exceeds, the check will get bounced. So these are the few reasons why a check might get bounced. And if you question me asking, if a check get bounced, can I 
complain against the same? I would say yes. Because in India, under Section 138 Negotiable Instrument Act, a bounce check is considered to be a criminal offence. So there are two ways to do this. Number one, if the payee is sure that if he or she resubmits the check, it will not be dishonoured again, then he can do that. But this has a time period from the date of issue to three months. This is one side. The other one is the payee can prefer sending a legal notice to the person who has issued the check by taking a bounce check lawyer's help. Second one is sending legal notice. So payee can also send a legal notice to the person who has issued the check by taking a help of a check bounce lawyer. Here it has a time frame. So normally when the payee actually went to the bank and deposited the check, the check got bounced and the payee got a written check memo. So from the date in which the memo is being issued before the next 30 days, the same legal notice can be sent. So the legal notice should have all the required information. How much amount, when was the deposition done, when did it get dishonored, all these things should be mentioned properly in a legal notice. So on the other side, when the person receives a legal notice, has to do some action. Maybe the amount has to be paid or a fresh check has to be issued before 30 days. Again, a time frame of 30 days. If at all, the person who has received the legal notice has not done anything between that time frame, payee again can take this into the court of magistrate. Again, when the payee is planning to give a complaint or place the complaint in the magistrate court, this also has a time frame. So now the person has received the legal notice and has not responded till the notice period actually got expired. So payee can take this up to the magistrate court. This starts from the date of expiry of the notice period to the next 30 days. Between this time frame, the same complaint has to be raised in the magistrate of court. So once the court receives the complaint with all the affidavits and documents and everything, the issuer of the check will be informed about the same. And if proven guilty, then imprisonment of two years or a fine of double the amount written in the check might be an answer. However, the defaulter can appeal in the lower court from the date of judgment to the next 30 days before this time frame. And if both of them decide to do out of court settlement, they can do that as well at any time. Filing a civil suit. If the payee has not received the total amount and is struggling to get the same, can go ahead and file a civil suit again using a help of a check bounce lawyer. Here, the total amount which is being spent during the course of the case can be tried to be recovered. And summary suit comes into the scene now. This is something which is different from others because the person on whom the complaint is being made cannot defend himself or herself. And in order to do that, proper permission from the court has to be taken. And this is mostly applied for promissory notes and checks. Consequences of a bounce check. People might think this is just a check which is getting bounced due to some reason and will not have any big consequences. But I would say it would have disastrous consequences. First one is we end up paying more money as penalty. When I issue a check, the check gets bounced. Both me and the person who has received the check will have to pay a penalty to their respective banks. And in addition, if this check was for the repayment of a loan, then we end up paying additional late charge as well. On the whole, we are paying an extra money. Maybe the mistake would have been maybe overwriting or mismatch of signature or anything, but we will end up paying more money there. Second one is Sybil score. When I issue a check and the check gets bounced, my Sybil score is going to get a big clash. And if I plan of taking a loan in the future, the loan might get rejected because I have a less Sybil score. So in order to maintain a healthy Sybil score, you have to make sure that your checks are given in a good way that it doesn't get bounced. All the things have to be mentioned perfectly without any flaws. And in addition, even after the withdrawal of the amount from the payee's side, make sure you have few thousands above the minimum balance which you should have in your account. Third one, what we were discussing, how to file a case, the same will happen here. So if I give a check, it gets bounced. The person has the full right to file a criminal or a civil case against me. One is under section 138 of Negotiable Instrument Act and second is 420. So this is a very common thing which we know which is for cheating. 
but in case if it is 420 it is a non bailable warrant and here it has to be proved that this person is guilty so we need not get into all these problems right when we issue a check we have to make sure that we are issuing it in the right way the last point is rbi has mentioned or has said out that if one person has more than four check bounces more than one crore money the bank can stop issuing checkbook to the person and bank also has the authority to take money from the account which is currently open there and which has the money which they need so in order to escape from all these consequences we have to make sure we give the check in the right way and if we get a check and it gets bounced make sure you take the action immediately because everything has a time frame as i mentioned the date you get the memo 30 days you need to send a legal notice if no legal notice action has been taken from the other side then again 30 days you have to raise a complaint if we delay and think of doing it tomorrow or day after we might end up sitting there with a check which has been bounced so today in this video we understood what check is what bounce check is how do we file a case in case a check which we received gets bounced and what are the consequences of a check getting bounced so on the whole if you issue a check make sure all these things are properly filled and your account has an amount of balance which they actually have to withdraw and all things are sorted on the other hand if you get a check and that gets bounced immediately take the action towards it else you will be just ended up with a check which got bounced so thank you so much for watching this video if you have any queries related to the same or in finance just give us a missed call to 0226181611 our money doctors will be getting in touch with you let them know about your queries and they will assist you with the same so this is sana ram signing off from this video if you like the video give a thumbs up and if you have not subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe it and click the bell icon so this is sana ram signing off you guys take care and bye bye